Yeah, welcome and welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. Got another good one for you today. I'm um, definitely going to talk some NBA JJ Redick and uh, a legend in this game has responded to his uh, recent commentary that seems to have caused an uproar. But before we get to that, you know what we got to do. Go ahead, if you haven't already, click that subscribe, that like, and that notification bell on your screen here on YouTube. Make sure you can stay up to date on uh, this content we're giving you so you're always alerted when new episodes come out. Also, if you want the audio-only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform. We're available pretty much anywhere you get audio podcasts. Type in The Format Podcast. Give us a little search. We're doing our best to move up there. And uh, go ahead and subscribe. Give us that five-star review. Leave us a comment here on YouTube or on your podcast platform. It uh, helps us move up in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. Now, let's get to it. So, J.J. Redick, man. Um, I I did a show last week talking about J.J. Redick's crazy comments in which he tried to assert, one, that Larry Bird is not a top five three-point shooter of all time because based on math, right? It's based on math, he said, um, attempts, makes, so on and so forth, okay? He's kind of taking out the context of the era where people didn't shoot nearly as many threes, but we'll get to that. And he's also taking out the context of shots made in the biggest moments. So we'll also get to that. Um, But um, before we even do that, uh, Dominique Wilkins, the human highlight film, one of the best small forwards in NBA history and one of the most glamorous, dazzling players of the 80s and early 90s. Just just an incredible, incredible player. And quick note, they say that today's athletes are so far superior to those of the past, especially you hear that from NBA fans. Just take a look at Dominique Wilkins as I'm talking here. And uh, that's one guy that I'll uh, put against any athlete from today in terms of what you want to deem athleticism, running and jumping and quickness and explosiveness, etc. Okay, and he's not the only one, but that's one that I will put up against anybody from today. Anyway, um, yeah, Dominique Wilkins uh, clearly had a big time response to J.J. Reddick's commentary. Let's go ahead and listen to that and then we'll get back and we'll discuss it. Reddick don't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm going to say it. I agree. He don't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm like, what basketball was you watching? To say something as idiotic as that is ridiculous. The physicality that was a part of the league. Hey, look, when you can put your hand on a guy's hip and make him go a certain way, if you can put that elbow in his chest to slow him up, which we call slowing a guy up when you're coming down the lane, so many guys can deal with that type of pressure. And for J.J. Reddick, who've played this game, I'm very disappointed that he has said something so stupid. This yeah. is the thing I'm having a problem with. Bird, who's a big guy, who got bumped all the time. You know, yeah. we played around the basket more than guards played around the basket. So I don't understand the logic of him saying that. Yeah. When clearly those big guys, even to the big guys today, they get touched a little bit more than little guys because they're around the basket. So it just don't make sense when – this is the thing I hate the most. We had our time. It was a great time. It's their time now. Yes. But don't crap on us to prove your point Yeah. because it doesn't make sense and it's not valid. Yeah, but the same thing they look at Sam and myself. Oh, the big the old guys uh, hating. No, we hating on what? I don't hate on no. these guys. You're, res- you're responding right now. Yeah. you're not. I'm I don't hate on these guys. These guys are great. Yeah. I don't. I just don't like to disrespect. Yeah, yeah. And to say that about Larry Bird, yeah. it was yeah, less less physical. Is he back stupid? To back, to yeah. back MVP. It, 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 it's just a, it's just a stupid comment to make. I mean, it ain't got nothing to do with Steph. Curry or Larry, yeah. it's the content. Exactly. We just of, broke down the, yeah. the it's, end it's, it's, result. It doesn't make sense. And he should know better than that. Yeah. And I don't care what he feel about me, you know, what his response might be, but to, when I hear that and I'm like, you really don't know, do you? So this is kind of what I alluded to last week when I talked about this on the, on the previous episode. It's, excuse me, really frustrating to me. On one hand, I totally understand that J.J. Redick feels the need to represent his generation and the era in which he played. I totally get it. But as a guy who prides himself on knowing the game and loving basketball, the statement on his face just seems pretty ridiculous. I mean, see, when I posted that video, some of you and uh, whoever you may be have have commented that uh, J.J. Redick was speaking specifically about the physicality Larry Bird faced on shooting threes. But no, J.J. didn't say that. What he said was, that uh, 
uh, Steph Curry based on the fact that, you know, when he's ru running and moving and cutting, he's getting grabbed and held, et cetera, by Marcus Smart, while he can show us multiple uh, instances of Larry Bird uh, flashing open off a pin down screen and um, the defender trying to shoot the gap and Larry Bird getting an open jumper. Now, part of that is, I've mentioned this before, Larry Bird at the greatest front court of all time, Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale. So those guys were setting outstanding screens to free him. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, also we know that Larry Bird was just outstanding without the ball. Now with that said, I can also show you multiple instances of Larry Bird hitting big threes in defenders' faces. So he was not, but that, that doesn't make sense what J.J. Redick is saying. Larry Bird often was not wide open shooting threes. Even still, that's not what J.J. Redick specified. What he said was that uh, what Steph Curry faces is more physicality than what Larry Bird faced. And that's absolutely ridiculous. And I showed you that on the last video. And it's, it's just crazy to think that in a league today where the league itself, league officials have come out and say that the rules changes have had the desired effect. I mean, this has been going on since 2006. I believe it was Stu Jackson who made commentary to the effect of allowing more freedom of movement for the players, right? So if there's more freedom of movement, then how is Steph Curry getting hit and grabbed and bumped more so than Larry Bird would have in his day? In an era where, as I said, you can literally take guys out of the air and it was just so much more physical. You heard Dominique Wilkins in the clip talking about when a guy's coming down the lane, you can put an elbow in his chest to slow him up. That's what they called it, right? Um, most of the teams had, you know, no dunks and no layup rules. That's why Dominique Wilkins was so incredible because even despite that, he was able to really like do amazing things and, and get, you know, right into the teeth of the defense and bang it on bigs, bang it on smalls, whoever it was. But anyway, um, the fact that J.J. Redick, a guy who I'm sure views himself as something of an NBA historian, and I think he played 15 years in the league, so I'm not trying to take shots at the guy at all, but it's just insane that he would, you know, make the statement that Steph Curry deals with more physicality than Larry Bird. I mean, that's absolutely nonsensical. Now, the other thing I wanted to uh, uh, touch on that we talked about is the fact that J.J. Redick says that Larry Bird, by no metric, can be considered uh, a top five three-point shooter of all time. Because again, what J.J. Redick is doing here is he's either appealing to or falling into the trap set by all the math nerds, all the analytics geeks of today's uh, uh, sports environment. And basically what J.J. Redick said, if you heard the previous comments, if not, you can go back and check that out on the uh, previous video that I did on this topic. J.J. Redick can't stop saying dumb things. J.J. Redick makes another ridiculous statement disrespecting previous errors. He's boiling it all down to math. And he literally said that on the show on First Take with Stephen A. and Matt Dog Russo, where he said it comes down to math. It's about uh, attempts and it's about makes. And it's not always about that. And to, to that point, let's take a look here. We widely regard Stephen Curry as the greatest three-point shooter of all time, arguably the greatest shooter of all time. And I, I've made that argument. I've kind of maybe backed down off of that a little bit, but I've made that argument in that we've never seen a shooter like Steph who could come off the curl, who could do it off the dribble, who could do it off the catch and shoot to that same level, who could, you know, his handle is incredible, but now we have to look at it when we examine it deeper. And the fact is, again, he, for the most part, is not facing three quarter court to full court pressure. And he's playing in a league that allows, to its own words, freedom of movement. So he's not facing the bumps and, and the grabs and all that on a regular basis, maybe against Marcus Smart because he's known as a physical defender. But for the most part, on a regular basis, he's not facing what the shooters of the past had to face when they were running that baseline and coming off the screens and curls and all that when the defenders, even though they were getting picked off, would still put an elbow in you, still put a shoulder in you, still stick out a leg or a knee, et cetera, right? So anyway, Steph Curry, who is arguably, arguably the greatest shooter of all time, if not one of them, has hit 43.2% from the field in the NBA Finals in his career, and he's hit 39.5% of his threes. Now, 39.5% of your threes is still an incredible average. I think Reggie Miller, the great Reggie Miller, known as one of the greatest shooters of all time, whose um, <clears throat> three-point record was broken by Ray Allen and then subsequently Ray Allen's record was broken by Steph Curry. Reggie Miller, I think, shoots about 38, 38 and a half percent from three from his career. Now, um, Stephen Curry, who we mentioned is arguably the greatest shooter of all time, shoots 39 and a half percent from three for his career. Why am I telling you this? Because 
when you say a guy like Larry Bird, who is widely known as one of the greatest shooters of all time, isn't one of the greatest shooters of all time, isn't not, I'm sorry, let me correct myself. JJ Reddick didn't say that he's not one of the greatest shooters of all time. He said that he's not a top five shooter of all time. But I find that interesting because the guy that's widely regarded as the best shooter of all time, Steph Curry, actually shoots a lower percentage in the NBA Finals, which we can all agree is the biggest moment in basketball, than Larry Bird does. Hmm, how does that work? Well, let's take a look. Larry Bird had a true shooting percentage of 54.5 in the NBA Finals in his career. He played in five NBA Finals series. And in those series, he shot 42.2% from three. Well, would you look at that? Hmm, 42.2% from three. Meanwhile, Steph Curry is only shooting 39.5% from three in his finals career. And we widely laud him as the greatest shooter of all time. See what I'm saying, JJ Reddick? If you want to do it, say it boils down to math and it's just makes and attempts, well then, this is where your argument falls through and it doesn't hold water. Now, for those arguing the error was different, I will admit Larry Bird took considerably less three-point attempts per game in the NBA Finals and Steph Curry did. I think Steph is averaging 11 three-point attempts per game in the Finals, Larry Bird less than two. So this is where we keep getting back to. You cannot compare then to now because the game was played so much differently. So when you, as a basketball historian, you, as a basketball analyst, you, as a basketball commentator, right, for the worldwide leader, as they call themselves, ESPN, you can't come out here and say the type of things that you're saying. Mad Dog didn't say that Bird was the greatest three-point shooter of all time. He said he was one of the top ones. You said he's not. So I understand, JJ Reddick, that what you're doing is protecting your era, but your era in this situation can't be protected. It just can't. So what you need to do is go back and check with Stu Jackson, look that up. You need to check with Adam Silver, who in 2018 said that the rules changes are having the designed effect of boosting offense. Adam Silver, the president of your league said that. I didn't say that. So what you need to do, JJ Reddick, is go back and check these things. And for someone who played in the league for 15 years and someone who spent four years at Duke University, an outstanding academic institution, you should be able to make the correlation between rules changes and the proliferation, I say this all the time, what? The proliferation of offensive production, right? I'm not saying causation, but there is a clear correlation and the league wants it that way. So what I'm saying is number one, you gotta stop saying these things because the legends are gonna come for you. They're gonna come get you. Secondly, you gotta stop saying these things because you're flat out wrong. And the truth of the matter does not support it. So what I'm asking from you guys is, what do you think about this? Is JJ Reddick right in saying that Larry Bird isn't the top five all-time three-point shooter just because he doesn't have nearly the attempts because the league was different back then? Is uh, What do you think of the fact that Larry Bird has a higher three-point shooting percentage in the NBA Finals than Steph Curry, the guy that we arguably call the greatest shooter of all time? Can't wait to hear your comments. Can't wait to take a look at those and respond to you guys. And uh, I'm out. Peace.